hurricane in Grenada, one island out of 190 UN members, one climate change event in 2004 destroyed 204% of our national GDP. 204%. Four and a half years later, we have not gotten back to that level. So when we talk about adequate levels of finance, think about the Philippines, think about the water loss in Philippines, what will it cost to give people a guarantee of clean water in every country in the 21st century? Is it one billion dollars? No. So we are clear that the figures have to be raised and we welcome all the people who the me a message. It says survival is non-negotiable and it is very true. No is climate change. Climate change is not an issue in my mind uh, that we can negotiate with. It's, it's, not, it's not a business deal that we are trying to do here. It is very sad that we have been in this process of negotiations and then we have ended up after a decade and more ended up with nothing. I see hope in you more than I see hope in the negotiators. I really see that. Let me, let me speak very frankly. Often what happens with people like us, uh, politicians, the adults, they are bound by rules, diplomacy. We can't speak our minds free. But let me, let, let, let's just speak our minds free. And let's just say, you know, what, what, what is really going on here? People have been negotiating on climate change to see, you know, who's going to get what, who's going to lose what. This is not, as I said, this is not an issue we, we, can, we can negotiate. I mean, I, I can speak like this because, in, in, like you as, as, um, as young people, um, you're not so much bound by the rules. Us, as a small island nation, just 300,000 people, among the world community, we can sometimes break the rules and can talk freely. This is why I'm speaking like this. It's very sad to see you know, the developing countries putting everything, well, I'm not trying to, um, like this, I hope when I, you know, when, when I, when I go out, you know, the, the, the group that I belong, it's not just going to say, okay, you no longer belong with us. I hope you're not going to do that. But often what happens, the developing countries, they keep saying the same thing, repeating the same statements, playing a blame game, where the developed countries have done this and that and that. Yes, it's true, the developed countries have done a lot. The climate has, you know, has, uh, it is, is, has been damaged by the, the uh, the actions of the, the developed countries. But the same thing is happening with the developments that we are all in the developing countries. This is something that we need to act together. It's not just something for the developed countries and it's not something for the developing countries. So I, I hope that the term negotiations are taken out soon in this process and then we start communicating to each other in a frank, and open man. Hope well, maybe then we end up with results. I'm sure if you are left to make choices and make decisions in, in these rooms, I'm sure you probably would make better decisions than what's going what's going to happen in the in the rooms. I'm going to hold this scarf very dearly with me. This is going to stay with, with me. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, there was the politicians. Unfortunately, it's the adults and the politicians who make the decisions for you. But you have a voice, and you have a way to demonstrate that this is what you want. If we look at the climate change talks and, and the negotiations, as you know, no matter how much I don't like to call it negotiations, um, we see there's more talk and there's very little action in this. And I think that's because 
there is not enough public demand to get things done. Let me speak to you as, 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 a, as a politician for, for, for once. For, as politicians, politics is not about right or wrong. It's about, you know, how do I get to office? You know, how, how do I win the elections? I haven't seen elections won in any country based on the issue of climate change. Now that has not been a public demand. That demand needs to come from the public. The public needs to say, I need to know what are your policies, what are you going to do about the issue of climate change. And it is based on that policy I'm going to elect you to the office. That needs to happen. That hasn't happened yet. So that the public demand hasn't grown to that extent yet. But when I said I see hope in you, so hopefully your generation, when you're, I don't know how many of you are at the age of 40, the ones who are at the age of 40 and the ones who will be voting soon, I hope when you make decisions, you will make this subject, the, change, the subject of climate change, the, re, the, the subject on which you choose your political leaders. And, it, and when that happens, things are going to be different. And when that happens, we will not be negotiating about climate change. Let me just say a, a few things about the nation where I come from. I don't know how many of you know about politics. So many of you may have heard about the underwater cabinet meeting we had. The underwater cabinet meeting wasn't something that we did for fun. It was trying to get the message out to the world. It's all about messaging. It's all about taking the message across. It's all about repeating the message consistently on the same message saying it say always the, the same message of all the time we i come from a tiny group of island uh, islands about 1200 of them some of them are very tiny less than a uh, few hectares one or two hectares um, let's say meters 100 meters by by another 50 meters that's how big some of them are, most of them are, 300,000 people. So, in the global community, in terms of numbers, we are insignificant. But this is a nation, this is a nation that have a history that goes back 2,000 years. And we have a written history of over 1,000 years. Our forefathers have lived there. We have, we have our memories there. This is where we call home. This is where we want to live and this is where we want to die. This is where we want our children to live. And this is where we want our children to be buried. We don't want to leave that place. They say climate change is going to continue the trends it's on now. In less than 100 years, we will be no more. We don't want that to happen to us. And I'm sure none of you here would want that to happen to us either. 300,000 people, I'm sure somebody can take care of us. Somebody can put us on, on dry land. But that would never be home for us. We will never call it home. We don't want that to happen. It's not too late yet. It's very late. But it's not too late yet. We can change things. We can make the right decisions. And for the politicians, for the adults to make the right decisions, the pressure must be kept on. And it should come from the youth. You can you are the best to start with. You can speak freely. You are bound by few rules. Yes, you have to trust us, but I think cautiously, because we have to see what has happened in the past. The past hasn't given us good lessons. Cautiously we should maintain the pressure, maintain the pressure, and this can be done. We still have hope. With your efforts, we can do this. Thank you very much.